Hey everybody, MS Farzan here, and welcome back to this video series on building a multiplayer card game with Phaser 3, Express, and Socket.io. In this video, we're actually going to get to the Socket.io uh, part of the whole thing and, and connect the pieces between the client and the server. I know you've been waiting a long time for this. So um, in the previous video, we, we left off talking about scene.socket.emit card played, and we passed in a bunch of information. So Socket.io is going to be the connective tissue between our client and the server and, and uh, the server to another client, uh, as this is a multiplayer game. And it works um, by uh, putting together a, a server-side Socket.io and a client-side Socket.io um, that emit messages between one another um, and uh, make cool things happen. So what we'll do is we'll go into our socket handler. We'll start building this out. And, and in this video, we'll start with the client side and then we'll go to the server side and hopefully um, make it all work uh, together. So in this, uh, right at the top of this socket handler um, class, I'm going to import, oh, I, we actually haven't, hasn't, haven't um, installed our socket IO yet. So I'm going to open a new command line and go to the client directory and I'm going to say npm install socket.io-client and that will, uh, if we've already installed the socket.io um, package on the server side but we need to install the client on the client side. Now that we've done that I can say uh, import io whoops what's going on here from socket.io client. Okay, then the constructor is going to take a scene. And at the very top of our, um, well, within our constructor, we're going to say scene.socket equals io. And we're going to give it a um, an address http localhost 3000 which is where our uh, server is also listening. And that scene.socket is what's being referenced here in the interactive handler. In my socket handler, I'm gonna start writing different messages. So scene.socket, the socket that's in the scene, on connect, do this function, console.log connected and then scene.socket.emit deal deck and pass in the socket ID. These are all contained within the socket package. So what we're saying is that when the when the socket connects, um, this the the socket in within the scene that has been created for us, log to the client console that it's connected and emit, meaning send a message out into the universe, hopefully to the server, um, that I want you to deal a, a deck to me, and I'm going to pass in the ID that is uh, specific to this very socket, so the um, the server knows. Uh, um, well, the server will know which socket sent it, but we need to use that data um, uh, later on, as we'll see. There are other times when we need the socket to send messages. Scene.socket.on, when it receives a message called first turn from the server, which we'll see in a moment, we want it to use the same game handler change turn function, which you'll recall just switches whoever's turn it is. And because it's nobody's turn, when it's the first turn, um, the the client that receives this will will change its um, is my turn boolean to true. Scene.socket.on change game state, and you'll recall that locally the game state is uh, just set to initializing. We'll pass in whatever the game state is from the server. Scene.gamehandler.changeGameState 
whatever the game state is. You're probably starting to see a, uh, a pattern here that we receive a message from the server and the server gives us that information and then we waterfall that information to the client however, however, howsoever we need to. Now if the game state that was received is initializing, then the scene dot deck handler dot deal card 1860 card back player card so you can as you might expect the very first message that it's going to receive in terms of game state is that it's initializing and we just kind of uh, deal one card a piece right now to signify the backs of the decks of the of the um, the two decks of cards once you see how this works you might change it as necessary but you know um, it's here for you to 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 hack into as much as you'd like and scene dot deck handler dot deal card 1000 135 that's the xy coordinates card back and uh, opponent card putting together a few things we've already worked with now this is where we say scene dot deal cards set interactive and scene dot deal cards set color hash zero zero f f f f Okay, so basically when the game state is changed to uh, initializing, then we'll, uh, we'll say um, we want it to deal a couple of cards, set the deal cards um, uh, button interactive and change the color so that the, the player knows that it's ready to be clicked. We're almost there, almost to the server part of this, but I just want to get through this so we get done with the, the socket handler. Scene.socket dot on deal cards when it receives a deal cards message it's going to need the socket id and cards and we're saying if the socket id it's that's received as a, a parameter in this case it'll be an argument is equal to this, the socket ID of this scene, then we're going to deal cards. Uh, basically, when we, um, when we click, now we can really talk about this, when we click the, the, um, uh, the deal cards uh, button here, when we do a pointer down event on the, the deal cards button or text, we emit this message to deal cards and we send to the server the scene, uh, the socket ID. And then the server sends back up the cards uh, to all of the clients that are involved. And we need to say, hey, if this is your, uh, if, if you're the client that asked for this, then you're gonna deal cards. If not, something else is gonna happen. So if the socket ID that we receive is the same as this socket ID, then we're just going to write a quick for loop for let i in the whatever number of cards there there are in the the deck that's being dealt let card equal scene dot game handler dot player hand dot push so we're we're um, filling the player hand with cards scene dot deck handler dot deal card and now we have to enter all the information that we would whenever we're rendering a, rendering a card 155 will be the x plus i times 155 I'll explain that in a moment 860 will be the y coordinate cards uh, at the place of i and player card. 
the reason why we do this is that if we just put X and Y, they'll all just like, uh, all the cards will be on top of one another. So I've just written, we want it to start at the 1 at 55 X coordinate and then plus uh, whatever I is times 155. So um, the first card will be at 155 plus zero. The second card will be at 155 plus 155. The third card will be at, um, you know, three times, uh, 155 plus three times 155, so on and so forth. Now, if it's not if it's not the the um, same socket ID, we'll just say else for let i in cards let card equal scene dot game handler dot opponent hand dot push scene dot deck handler dot deal card, and then we'll do this um, at 155 plus i times 155, which is the same, but the y coordinate is going to be 135, and we're just going to deal a card back, and it's an opponent card. Okay. So if it's if if we requested the deal cards, then you know deal us some player cards. If not, just deal us some card backs uh, in a different position. And finally, the only other uh, scenario in this very limited um, you know environment that we need some interactivity um, with communications over sockets is when a card is is being played. We want to say when somebody drops a card in the drop zone, uh, we want to send a message of what card was dropped to the server and then send that back up at the chain so that we can render it. So we say scene.socket dot on card played and we'll receive the card name and the socket ID. If the socket ID does not equal the scene socket ID. It's important because if if we dragged and dropped the card, okay, no problem. We don't need to know about it anymore. But if somebody else did, that's when we need to render it on the screen. Scene.gamehandler.opponenthand.shift.destroy. Destroy one of those card backs to, to give us the, the sense that a card has been played. And then scene dot deck handler dot deal card scene dot drop zone dot x. Oops. Scene dot drop zone dot x. Scene dot drop zone dot y card name, opponent card. This is going to be a little wonky because it's going to put all the cards right on top of one another, but we'll deal with that in a moment. Um, so just saying that the the deal card, um, w when this happens, we want the deck handler to deal cards um, that are equal to the uh, using the names of the cards that have been offered, the card that's been offered to us, and um, their opponent cards, so they should be of a certain color. And then we're almost done with this, but we need to come back to it later. Okay, so that's basically the, the client-side functionality. Let's build out the server, and then we'll get this all working together. Um, so here, we just, we're just we uh, just importing Express and uh, HTTP and uh, I.O. Um, we're going to need uh, another thing here. Uh, we're going to use a little package called um, Shuffle Array. So I'm going to open a command line. This time I'm at the root level, the server level, and I'm going to say npm install shuffle-array. This is going to help us with just a, some basic functionality here. So I'll say um, constant shuffle equals require shuffle-array. And... Um, OK, 
okay. And then now we can start working with IO. So we're going to start by saying IO.onConnection when a, when a socket connects we'll write a function and say console.log uh, user connected and we'll want to hear what is the socket ID. Let's try that. We have um, oh, there's some cores issues. We can resolve this in a moment. Um, what are we doing? Okay. So um, something that is uh, uh, kind of new, I think by socket IO um, version 3.0, I can't, can't remember. But anyway, between the previous uh, um, series and this one, there's been a change which requires us to have a little bit more of a complex configuration for our, our um, socket IO backend. Um, if you're not familiar with cross-origin resource sharing, I, I uh, recommend looking it up, but it basically just means that if we're going to be communicating with socket IO in this manner where the server and the, the client are separate and um, the server is receiving requests from all uh, different types of places, we need to enable cores uh, or cross-origin resource share sharing. So um, all that requires really is for us to say const cores equals require cores. And then constant IO will say require socket IO and then instead of just HTTP we'll say comma and we'll say cores origin HTTP slash slash local host 3000 and the methods will be get and post. Hopefully that's not too onerous. Save it and let's see if this works. Sometimes if you just hit refresh it's not the best methodology because it might not disconnect as necessary. So um, what we'll do is we'll go to the, um, like just any of your, your client files and just hit save. And then it should, should reboot the whole thing. And uh, that's not working. Okay, let's see. Um, from origin 8080, and that's not, we're having cores issues. So let's see why that is. Well, actually there's a simple reason for this. And the reason is that in my uh, the server, uh, the origin that we wrote is actually just pointing to itself. It needs to be pointing to 8080, port 8080, which is where the client will be making requests from. And uh, the uh, we see that it's connected. Um, so let's let's take a look at that again. So we've changed this to enable uh, cross-origin resource sharing. And whereas in the socket handler, we're um, uh, we're making requests to port 3000, you'll recall that the server is listening on port 3000 and uh, the um, um, point is that we want the server to know that it's going to be receiving quite a request from 8080. So that's that. Okay, cool. So we did that. Um, and then so um, when uh, a client connects, we want the server to log to its console that a client is connected with the socket ID. We also want the client to, to log to its own console that it's connected. Let's just go back into here and, and just save a file in the client so that we get um, uh, Webpack to reboot the, the service. And then now we see that it's connected. And you'll notice that if I go to the localhost 8080 with another tab, it also says that it's connected. And if I take a look at my server, it, see, it shows that two users have now connected uh, with two different socket IDs. So now I know that, that, that all that's working. 
let's start building out the server. So when a, a something connects, let's um, uh, say that a user connected and log the, the socket ID. And let's start uh, building things out first by at the top here under under um, the shuffle. Let's just say let players equal uh, empty object and let the ready check equals zero. That's what we're going to use to to see if all players are ready to start playing the game. And under this log to the console, let's say players, let's add to the players uh, object by using the socket ID of whatever just connected as the key. And the value will be another object which will have in deck the whatever cards be an empty array, in hand be an empty array, and an is player A, or the first player, will say that's false. Now the, the, the reason why we're going to uh, handle it this way is have these uh, 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 in deck and in hand arrays is that you could potentially, for example, check um, to prevent cheating uh, and I'm not an expert in this, so you'll have to to make sure that you you work this out correctly with to the, with the best best practices that you have available to you. But you want to be able to check um, if a if a client sends you a card that it's not in its hand or in its deck. You want the server to be able to say like, wait a minute, that doesn't seem right because I, I don't have um, recollection of you having that card in your hand at this time. It also is just going to help us here, and we're going to say. All within this IO on connection. If object dot keys of players dot length is less than two, players of whatever the socket ID that we're that is just uh, connected is player A equals true. And IO dot emit first turn. So basically, this just means that if the if it's the first player to connect, let's say that they're the first, let's say that they um, um, they are going to be player A, and emit first turn, which you'll recall um, will will uh, change that client's turn um, uh, is my turn to be true. This just basically is an easy way of us saying that whoever connects first, they're going to have the first turn. You could deal. You could do. You could randomize this or flip a coin. Whatever. We're just doing it the easiest way possible. And then below this, but still within that block, the uh, connection block, we're going to say socket dot on deal deck when it receives a deal deck um, emission or a message. We'll run a function with a socket ID that has been passed to us. Uh, from the client, and we'll say players dot. I'm sorry, players, and we'll use the socket ID to retrieve the player, um, the object within the player based on the socket ID. Dot in deck. Now this is where we get to sh use the shuffle array. We shuffle, and just because we have two cards, we'll say boolean. and ping. So if you had more cards, you could absolutely uh, add the names of them in here. So we're just we're using the names here uh, on the server side to determine what cards are going to be rendered on screen. And console.log players. Let's let's log to the server console. Um, uh, who are the players? Like, what are their IDs? And then also, what are their uh, what cards are in their in their deck? And then we'll say if object dot keys players dot length is less than two. So if there are less than two players, return. Do, don't do the next line. But if there are more than if there are more than one player, so two players, io dot emit. change game state. 
and change it to initializing, although that's what it is to begin with. Okay, that's a lot, so um, let's uh, let's just take a look at that right now. I've saved this, I've saved everything, and now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to my one of my client files and just save that to, so we have a fresh start with all this stuff. And now let's see what happens. Well, okay, for my uh, for one client, I have it open and it says connected. The game state is initializing. And for my other client, it says connected. Is my turn is true? That must have been the first client to connect. And its game state is also initializing. When I hover over the deal cards button, it's now been enabled. So I can see that. When I click, nothing's going to happen, but that's okay. Um, and it's dealt uh, a, uh, a magenta card back to signify the opponent deck and a cyan card back to signify the player deck. If I look also at the um, the uh, console for the server, I see that it's logged the players. And one of them has this really long um, socket ID beginning with 5 p.m. And it shows me that in the deck is Boolean and Ping. It's shuffled those two cards. And in the hand is nothing, and it's player A. That must be this this uh, client. The other one that begins with LWX uh, in in the deck. It obviously has the same two cards, but they're in a different order because they've been shuffled. There's nothing in their hand, and they are not player A. So that's working. All of that in terms of the initial game state is working. So let's add some functionality for when somebody deals cards or when cards are played. Back to my server. So socket dot on card played function. Um, oh, sorry. Let's let's do deal cards first. It's a longer one. Deal cards. Now we've already done this the client side stuff for this, so. We'll say deal cards is a function based on the socket ID that has been passed. Socket ID that has been passed to us, and we'll run a for loop for let i equals zero. I'm just as presuming that we want to deal five cards. I is less than five. I plus plus. If players socket.id sorry socket id the socket id that has been passed to us dot in deck dot length is zero then basically what we're going to do is just copy and paste this here this is just a little check um, to say that like if we've if we've already emptied the whatever's in deck, let's just shuffle in another uh, round of cards, um, just so we keep the keep the train going, so to speak. You'll probably have to handle this diff uh, differently, and you'll still say that well, if they've if they've used everything in their deck, then well, that's it. I'm just gonna say well, that's the the end of the deck. You're gonna have to shuffle again, or end of game, or whatever it is. Right now, we're just making sure there's always cards in the in the deck. Um, and after we've done that check, oops, where am I? Uh, what was I doing? Oh, okay. That was driving me crazy. Okay. Um, Players socket ID dot in hand dot push players socket ID in deck shift. So basically take the take the uh, top card from the um, from the deck, put it in the uh, in the hand, and then now that you've done that, console.log players again, just so, so I can make sure that everything is going properly. io.emit 
deal cards and pass the socket ID that was passed to us and also the cards. that are in the hand. So we're making sure the server govern, governs what cards are passed where. And then increment ready check. So if it was the first first um, uh, player, then we'll you know make ready check one. If it's the second player, ready check will be two. And if ready check is greater than or equal to two, I guess it could just be two, Change the game state to ready. We haven't actually declared it here, so let's do that now. Let game state equals initializing. Make sure that the game state is the same in the server as it is everywhere else. Game state equals ready. And io.emit change game state ready. Cool. So that should put together a bunch of different pieces. And what should happen now is um, we're going to go to our, what I keep doing this, um, one of these files, just save it so that it the Webpack reboots. Go to our clients. We see that one of them says that it's, it's initializing and the other one says that it's their turn. So I'm gonna click deal cards and let's see what happens when I do that. Well, not a whole lot. Let's see. Um, cannot read property in hand of uh, undefined. I bet that I um, uh, wrote something incorrectly, and I sure did. Instead of writing um, socket ID, I wrote socket dot ID, which are two different things. Save it again, um, and save one of these files again to restart Webpack. Okay, so now this one is the first first player. I hit deal cards and look at that. I get five cards right here. And I have done something wrong on the on the uh, the opponent card side of things. So let's see. Um, this is in socket handler number uh, line 34. Let's see what I did wrong here. Socket handler line 34, let card equals scene dot game handler opponent hand dot push. Um, cannot read properties undefined push. So it doesn't know what opponent hand is. So let's go to our game handler and just keep going past the call stack. Um, oh, I have two opponent decks instead of an opponent hand. Great. You probably were yelling at me when you saw this like two or three videos ago, but you know, here we are. So we're doing it again. Going back here, this is the first client and this is the second client. I'm gonna deal cards. Now I see five cards here, they're randomized. Can't see it very well, we'll deal with that in a future video. And then on the, the client that did not order the cards, we see the backs of them here. And same, when I click deal cards here, I see them on my screen, but the first client, they see the pink cards up here, the magenta ones. And I cannot, I can no longer click on deal cards because we've disabled that after um, the game state has been changed. See, the game state is now ready. Cool, very cool. Um, let's see what happens now when we want to, uh, when um, cards are dropped. So that will we'll do socket dot on card play. This is actually stunningly simple. Function card name and socket ID. IO dot emit 
card played and pass in the card name and the socket ID and io.emit change turn. So when we receive a, uh, a message that a card has been dropped, which is in the, the um, interactive handler here, um, then take the, the name and the socket ID and then pass it back up the chain. And that's when we receive this card played and we say, well, if, if it's a different socket ID than mine, then I um, should render the card. So let's see that in action. So I deal cards and deal cards. And um, this is where we saw that we added 155 pixels every time to make them render um, apart from each other on screen. Well, now we'll see why we did that. When I um, go to, uh, oh, it looks like I can't actually drag any cards. So that's, that's something, that's an issue here. When I go to um, uh, drag a card, it uh, it drags across the screen, which is you know that's fine. Um, it's not working perfectly right now. We'll fix that. Um, and it drops in the drop zone. They all drop one on top of each other. But what's cool is that they do show in the um, on the other side of the screen uh, or on the other client as a pink card. So now I'm dragging. Uh, well, we'll look at the all these pink cards here in client A. Client B drags a boolean, drops it in the drop zone. That's not working. Okay, let's let's fix that. Let's see what's going on there with the uh, the interactive handler. Interact should be just going to keep reminding us it should be interactivity handler. So in the interactive handler, um, we have our um, drag start. Oh, I've totally missed a block here, and that's why. Apologies to people watching and screaming in the previous uh, video. Scene.input.on drag start, oh, sorry, drag, comma, pointer, game object, drag x, drag y. game object dot x equals drag x game object dot y equals drag y it's like the simplest function basically when drag happens make the game object um, follow the mouse um, and then just making sure everything else i'm checking my notes to make sure everything else is right see i'm gonna put on drag start pointer game object game object set tint scene bring to top yep 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 Scene object on, drag end, that's all good. On drop, if it's my turn, GameStead is ready, do the thing. Uh, and that's all good, great. Okay, let's try it again. So we open our clients, we deal cards. As I deal them here, they show up on here. As I deal them here, they show up on the original client. When I drag, this is still not working for some reason, and I'll have to figure out why. Okay, so I see that my is my turn is not um, is not changing over uh, between when someone dra drags and drops a card. So let's see why that's happening. And the problem is, once again, a simple one, where in my interactive handler, I have written gameobject.x per case instead of lowercase and y. And uh, save everything. Go back to my, my game, deal my cards. They showed up here, deal my other cards, they showed up should show up in the other client. Now this is the, the important thing is that it's um, it's this client's turn, the first tab's turn. Second tab, client B, it's not their turn. So they should be able to drag around the screen, which is, you know, they're able to do that, but they're not able to drop a card because it's not their turn. And as you see, the tint changes as uh, they drag the card. But the first 
player, client A, they can drag and when they drop, it drops right in the middle of the drop zone. And that's where it shows here um, on the client B's uh, drop zone as a, as a pink card. Um, they played a boolean here and uh, it shows up as a, as a pink boolean on the on client B's screen. And now I can't drag, as client A, I can't drag this boolean anymore because we've disabled that. Uh, and I couldn't ever drag it with uh, the uh, with client B. Client B drags, and uh, what what I'm seeing now is that even though the the card has been dropped, the turn hasn't changed. So let's see if we can we can pick through and see why that's happening. So when um, the the thing drops, um, if it's my uh, turn and uh, the game state is ready, then it should do the thing and. Uh, turn off uh, the drag ability, and then emit the card played with the name and the socket ID. So that, that worked great. And then we went to the server, and that was on uh, card played. And in the server, card played um, emits card played with the card name and the socket ID, and also emits change turn. So that's what we need to look for. We go to our socket handler and see um, where is the change turn directive? Well, there isn't one, and that explains why we're having so many problems, isn't it? Um, so in our um, in our socket handler, right under the change game state, we'll write a secret scene dot socket dot on change turn comma scene dot game handler dot change turn just make sure that works deal cards deal cards it's not this person's turn so they can't drag and drop it is this person's turn so they drop and it's not their turn anymore it is this person's turn so now they can drag and drop and that should delete a card here that's right and we can keep going and the annoying thing here is that it all the cards just render on top of one another. So let's just fix that before um, moving on to the next thing with the next video. And there's a couple places where we need to change this. The first place is in the uh, interactive handler. You might re recall that in our zone handler, we um, created uh, this data that card, the number of cards that are in the drop zone is set to zero. So in our interactive handler, when um, the um, uh, a card is dropped, we want to, after, after it's dropped, we want to increment that and say scene.dropzone.data.values. This is how you act access the values, uh, the data values in a, um, in a game object in phaser. Cards plus plus. And then we're gonna change to say, not necessarily, we don't necessarily, the Y is fine, the, the, um, the height of the thing is fine. But in terms of the horizontal uh, coordinate, the X coordinate, rather than just putting it at the origin of the drop zone, we're gonna say, Game object uh, dot x should be drop zone dot x minus three fifty, which is like kind of more over to the left, plus drop zone dot data dot values dot cards number of cards times fifty. So one, 0 times 50, 1 times 50, so on and so forth. And similarly, in the socket handler, when a card is played, rather than just dropping it in scene.dropzone.x, we're going to drop it in scene.dropzone.x minus 350. Plus scene dot drop zone dot ec, no, sorry dot data dot values dot cards times 
50. So we're already storing how many cards are in the drop zone and we just want to increment uh, from left to right so that we have a little space in between those cards. Now when we play our game, um, well before we do very much, let's just see that this it's this person's turn, they deal their cards, and this other person's turn, um, I mean well it's nobody's turn yet but they have um, are just dealing their cards the game state changes to ready if I check the console for the um, uh, for the server I see that there are currently two players with these two different socket IDs and um, there uh, uh, I can see what hands they have uh, which um, should correspond yep right with this uh, uh, this client and the other one and who's which uh, is the uh, player a now I'm going to drag and drop a card into the into the drop zone, but I, I can't because it's not this person's turn. When I go to this client's turn, and it is their turn, I drag and I drop it uh, to the drop zone, and it goes all the way to the left here. And that appears all the way, that Boolean appears all the way to the left here. Then it's no longer this person's turn, so it's a client B's, B's turn, they drag and drop, and that went right all the way to the left. So that wasn't quite right. I need to, to make sure that um, that um, uh, is is changed. And then it's this person's turn. So I'm now I'm just like dropping cards on top of each other. So we missed a we missed a a, a point here. Um, scene socket on card played. Oh, the one thing that we forgot to do uh, is just to add scene dot drop zone dot data dot values dot cards we're going to need to increment that that's because you know no matter where the card comes from we want them to go left to right save this again and uh, it's uh, this uh, tab one's turn we deal cards they show up here we deal cards on client two Client one drags and drops to the drop zone. It appears in client two. Client two drags and drops and appears right next to them. And it shows as a blue card here, but they're switched on the on the other client. And that's the way that we want it want it to work. We see that the um, that um, the server is correctly displaying in the console the socket IDs as well as what's in deck or in hand or who's player A or whatever, um, and then. Uh, correctly, client A drags and drops a card to the drop zone. Uh, it deletes one of the cards from client B's uh, opponent cards, and it renders the card in pink here in the drop zone, and the same is true vice versa. And I can't drag any of these cards, I can't drag any opponent cards, and if it's not my turn, I can't drag and drop a card. And that's what we want to see from this particular game. Um, your, the functionality of your game might be very different and you might have to be able to, like I said, be able to drag them at any point in time. Um, but for now, for this very basic example, I think this is working just great. There are a few odds and ends to, to clean up here. For example, I would love a, uh, the functionality of being able to hover over one of these cards and display a larger virgin, version of that card. And we're gonna do that in the next video. And we'll also talk about things like deployment and you know uh, some other options for refactoring the code. So uh, be sure to tune in for that one as well. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and if it has, please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel for more. You can also follow me on Twitter, and I'd love for you to check out my books and games at nightpathpub.com, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon.